Hello, everyone. I will be picking back up inside of Wonder on page 78 at the Punnett Square. If I have children, there's a one in two chance that I will pass on the defective gene to them. That doesn't mean they'll look like August, but they'll carry the gene that got double dosed in August and help make him the way he is. If I marry someone who has the same defective gene, there's a one in two chance that our kids will carry the gene and look totally normal, a one in four chance that our kids will not carry the gene at all, and a one in four chance that our kids will look like August. If August has children with someone who doesn't have a trace of the gene, there's a 100% probability that their kids will inherit the gene, but a 0% chance that their kids will have a double dose of it, like August, which means they'll carry the gene no matter what, but they could look totally normal. If he marries someone who has the gene, their kids will have the same odds as my kids. This only explains the part of August that's explainable. There's that other part of his genetic makeup that's not inherited, but incredibly bad luck. Countless doctors have drawn little tic-tac-toe grids for my parents over the years to try to explain the genetic lottery to them. Geneticists use these punnett squares to determine inheritance, recessive and dominant genes, probabilities, and chance. But for all they know, there's more they don't know. They can try to forecast the odds, but they can't guarantee them. They use terms like germline mosaicism, chromosome rearrangement, or delayed mutation to explain why their science is not an exact science. I actually like how doctors talk. I like the sound of science. I like how words you don't understand explain things you can't understand. There are countless people under words like germline mosaicism, chromosome rearrangement, or delayed mutation. Countless babies who will never be born, like mine. Out with the old. Miranda and Ella blasted off. They attached themselves to a new crowd destined for high school glory. After a week of painful lunches where all they would do was talk about people that didn't interest me, I decided to make a clean break for it. They asked no questions. I told no lies. We just went our separate ways. I didn't even mind after a while. I stopped going to lunch for about a week, though, to make the transition easier to avoid the fake, oh, shoot, there's no room for you at the table, Olivia. It was easier just to go to the library and read. I finished War and Peace in October. It was amazing. People think it's such a hard read, but it's really just a soap opera with a lot of characters. People falling in love, fighting for love, dying for love. I want to be in love like that someday. I want my husband to love me the way Prince Andre loved Natasha. I ended up hanging out with a girl named Eleanor, who I'd known from my days at PS22, though we'd go on to different middle schools. Eleanor had always been a really smart girl, a little bit of a crybaby back then, but nice. I'd never realized how funny she was, not laugh out loud, daddy funny, but full of great quips. And she never knew how lighthearted I could be. Eleanor, I guess, had always been under the impression that I was very serious. And as it turns out, she never liked Miranda and Ella. She thought they were stuck up. I gained entry through Eleanor to the smart kids table at lunch. It was a larger group than I'd been accustomed to hanging out with and a more diverse crowd. It included Eleanor's boyfriend, Kevin, who would definitely become class president someday. A few techie guys, girls like Eleanor, who were members of the yearbook committee and the debate club, and a quiet guy named Justin who had small round glasses and played the violin and who I had an instant crush on. When I'd see Miranda and Ella, who were now hanging out with the super popular set, we say, hey, what's up, and move on. Occasionally, Miranda would ask me how August was doing, and then I'd 
and then say, tell him I said hello. This I never did, not just by Miranda, but because August was in his own world these days. There were times at home that we never crossed paths. All right, everyone, this next chapter is going to be called October 31st. Grant had died the night before Halloween. Since then, even though it's been four years, this has always been a sad time, year, sad time of the year for me. For mom too, though she doesn't always say it. Instead, she immerses herself in getting August costumes ready since we all know Halloween is his favorite time of the year. This year was no different. August really wanted to be a Star Wars character called Boba Fett. So mom looked for Boba Fett costume in August's size, which strangely enough was out of stock everywhere. She went to every online store, found a few on eBay that were going out for an outrageous amount, and finally ended up buying a Django Fett costume that she then converted into a Boba Fett costume by painting it green. I would say, in all, she must have spent two weeks working on that stupid costume. And no, I won't mention the fact that mom has never made any of my costumes because it really has no bearing on anything at all. The morning of Halloween, I woke up thinking about Grants, which made me really sad and weepy. Dad kept telling me to hurry up and get dressed, which just stressed me out even more. And suddenly I started crying. I just wanted to stay home. So dad took August to school that morning and mom said I could stay home and the two of us cried together for a while. One thing I knew for sure, however much I missed Grands, mom must have missed her more. All those times August was clinging to life after surgery, all those rush trips to the ER, Grands had always been there for mom. It felt good to cry with mom, for both of us. At some point, mom had the idea of our watching The Ghost and Mrs. Muir together which was one of our all-time favorite black and white movies. I agreed that that was a great idea. I think I probably would have used this weeping session as an opportunity to tell mom everything that was going on at school with Miranda and Ella. But just as we were sitting down in front of the DVD player, the phone rang. It was the nurse from August's school calling to tell mom that August had a stomach ache and should be picked up. So much for the old movies and the mother-daughter bonding. Mom picked August up, and the moment he came home, he went straight to the bathroom and threw up. Then he went to his bed and pulled the covers over his head. Mom took his temperature, brought him some tea, and assumed the August mom role again. Via's mom, who had come out for a little while, was put away. I understood, I understood though. August was in bad shape. Neither one of us asked him why he had worn his bleeding screen costume to school instead, of the Boba Fett costume mom had made for him. If it annoyed mom to see the costume she had worked on for two weeks tossed on the floor, unused, she didn't show it. Next up, we have Trick or Treat. <clears throat> August said he wasn't feeling well enough to go trick or treating later in the afternoon, which was sad for him because I know how much he loved trick or treating. Love to trick-or-treat, especially after it got dark outside. Even though I was well beyond the trick-or-treating stage myself, I usually threw on some mask or other to accompany him up and down the blocks, watching him knocking on people's doors, giddy with excitement. I knew it was one the one night a year when he could truly be like every other kid. No one knew he was different under the mask. To August, that must have felt absolutely amazing. At seven o'clock that night, I knocked on his door. Hey, I said. Hey, he said back. He wasn't using his PlayStation or reading a comic book. He was just lying in his bed looking at the ceiling. Daisy, as always, was next to him on the bed, her hair draped over his legs. The bleeding screen costume was crumpled up on the floor next to the Boba Fett costume. How's your stomach, I said, sitting next to him on the bed. I'm still nauseous. You sure you're not up for the Halloween parade? Positive. This surprised me. Usually August was such a trooper about his medical issues, whether it was skateboarding a few days after surgery or sipping through 
a straw when his mouth was practically bolted shut. This was a kid who's gotten more shots, taken more medicines, put up with more procedures by the age of 10 than most people who would have to put up within 10 lifetimes. And he was sidelined from a little nausea, nausea. You want to tell me what's up? I said, sounding a bit like mom. No. Is it school? Yes. Teachers, schoolwork, friends. He didn't answer. Did someone say something? I asked. People always say something. He asked, he answered bitterly. I could tell he was close to crying. Tell me what happened, I said. And he told me what happened. He had overheard some very mean things some boys were saying about him. He didn't care about what the other boys had said, except expected. He expected that, but he was hurt that one of the boys was his best friend, Jack Will. I remember his mentioning Jack a couple of times over the past few months. I remember mom and dad saying he seemed like a really nice kid, saying they were glad August had already made a friend like that. Sometimes kids are stupid, I said softly, holding his hands. I'm sure he didn't mean it. Then why would he say it? He's been pretending to be my friend all along. Tushman probably bribed him with good grades or something. I bet you he was like, hey, Jack, if you make friends with the freak, you don't have to take any tests this year. You know that's not true. And don't call yourself a freak. Whatever. I wish I'd never gone to school in the first place. But I thought you were liking it. I hate it. He was angry all of a sudden, punching his pillow. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. He was shrieking at the top of his lungs. I didn't say anything. I didn't know what to say. He was hurt. He was mad. I let him have a few more minutes of his fury. Daisy started licking the tears off of his face. Come on, Augie. I said, patting his back gently. Why don't you put on your Django Fett costume and it's a Boba Fett costume. Why does everyone mix that up? Boba Fett costume, I said, trying to stay calm. I put my arm around his shoulders. Let's just go to the parade, okay? If I go to the parade, mom will think I'm feeling better and make me go to school tomorrow. Mom will never make you go to school, I answered. Come on, Augie. Let's just go. It'll be fun, I promise. And I'll let you have all of my candy. He didn't argue. He just got out of bed and slowly started pulling on his Boba Fett costume. I helped him adjust the straps and tighten the belt. And by the time he put on his helmet, I could tell he was feeling better. Time to think. August played on the stomach ache the next day so he wouldn't have to go to school. I admit I felt a little bad for mom who was genuinely concerned that he had a stomach bug, but I had promised August I wouldn't tell her about the incident at school. By Sunday, he was still determined not to go back to school. What are you planning on telling mom and dad? I asked him when he told me this. They said I could quit whenever I wanted to. He said this while he was still focused on a comic book he was reading. But you've never been the kind of kid who quits things, I said truthfully. That's not like you. I'm quitting. You're going to have to tell mom and dad why, I pointed out, pulling the comic book out of his hand so he'd have to look up at me while we were talking. Then mom will call the school and everyone will know about it. Will Jack get in trouble? I would think so. Good. I have to admit, August was surprising me more and more. He pulled another comic book off his shelf and started leafing through it. Augie, I said, are you really going to let a couple of stupid kids keep you from going back to school? I know you've been enjoying it. Don't give them that power over you. Don't give them that satisfaction. They have no idea I even heard them, he explained. No, I know, but Via, it's okay. I know what I'm doing. I've made up my mind. But this is crazy, Augie, I said empathetically, pulling the new comic book away from him too. You have to go back to school. Everyone hates school sometimes. I hate school sometimes. I hate my friends sometimes. That's just life, Augie. You want to be treated normally, right? This is normal. We all have to go to school sometimes, despite the fact that we have bad days, okay? Do people go out of their way to avoid touching you, Via? He answered 
which left me momentarily without an answer. Yeah, right. That's what I thought. So don't compare your bad days at school to mine's, okay? Okay, that's fair, I said. But it's not a contest about whose day sucks the most, Augie. The point is we all have to put up with bad days. Now, unless you want to be treated like a baby the rest of your life or like a kid with special needs, you just have to suck it up and go. He didn't say anything, but I think that was the last bit of getting to him. You don't have to say a word to those kids, I continued. August, actually, it's so cool that you know what they said, but they don't know you know what they said, you know? What the heck? You know what I mean. You don't have to talk to them, talk to them ever again if you don't want to, and they'll never know why. See, or you can pretend to be friends with them, but deep down inside, you know you're not. Is that how you are with, with Miranda, he asked. No, I answer quickly, defensively. I never fake my feelings with Miranda. So why are you saying, should I, I should? I'm not. I'm just saying you shouldn't let those little jerks get to you. That's all. Like Miranda got to you. Why do you keep bringing Miranda up? I yelled impatiently. I'm trying to talk to you about your friends. Please keep mine out of it. You're not even friends with her anymore. What does that have to do with what we're talking about? The way August was looking at me reminded me of a doll's face. He was just staring at me blankly with his half-closed doll eyes. She called the other day, he said finally. What? I was stunned. And you didn't tell me? She wasn't calling you, he answered, pulling both comic books out of my hands. She was calling me just to say hi, to see how I was doing. She didn't even know I was going to a real school now. I can't believe you hadn't t even told her. She said the two of you don't hang out as much anymore, but she wanted me to know she'd always love me like a big sister. Double stunned, stung, flabbergasted. No words formed in my mouth. Why didn't you tell me? I said finally. I don't know, he shrugged, opening the first comic book again. Well, I'm telling mom and dad about Jack Will if you stop going to school, I answered. Tushman will probably call you into school and make Jack and those other kids apologize to you in front of everyone, and everyone will treat you like a kid who should be going to a school for kids with special needs. Is that what you want? Because that's what's going to happen. Otherwise, just go back to school and act like nothing happened. Or if you want to confront Jack about it, fine. But either way, if you... Fine, 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 he interrupted. What? Fine, I'll go, he yelled, not loudly. Just stop talking about it already. Can I please have, read my book now? Fine, I answered. Turning to Lee's room, I thought of something. Did Miranda say anything else about me? He looked up from the comic book and it looked right into my eyes. She said to tell you she misses you, quote unquote. I nodded, thanks. I casually, too embarrassed to let him see how happy that made me. Going into part three. Summer. You are beautiful no matter what they say. Words can't bring you down. You are beautiful in every single way. Yes, words can't bring you down. Christina Aguilera, beautiful. Weird kids. Some kids have actually come out and asked me why I hang out with the freak so much. These are kids that don't even know him well. If they knew him, they wouldn't call him that because he's a nice kid. I always answer and don't call him that. You're a saint, Summer. Him and Chen said to me the other day, I couldn't do what you're doing. It's not a big deal, I answer her truthfully. Did Mr. Tushman ask you to be friends with him? Charlotte Cody asks. No, I'm friends with him because I want to be friends with him, I answered. Who knew that my sitting with August Pullman at lunch would be such a big deal? People acted like it was the strangest thing in the world. It's weird how weird kids can be. I sat with him the, that first day because I felt sorry for him. That's all. Here he was, this strange looking kid in a brand new school. No one was talking to him. Everyone was staring at him. 
All the girls at my table were whispering about him. He wasn't the only new kid at Beecher Prep, but he was the only one everyone was talking about. Julian had nicknamed him the zombie kid, and that's what everyone was calling him. Did you see the zombie kid yet? Stuff like that gets around fast, and August knew it. It's hard enough being the new kid even when you have a normal face. Imagine having his face. So I just went over and sat with him. Not a biggie. I wish people would stop trying to turn it into something major. Just a kid. The weirdest looking kid I've ever seen, yes, but just a kid. This next chapter is called The Plague. I do admit August's face, some face takes some getting used to. I've been sitting with him for two weeks now, and let's just say he's not the neatest eater in the world. But other than that, he's pretty nice. I should also say that I don't really feel sorry for him anymore. That might have been what made me sit down with him at the first time, but it's not why I keep sitting down with him. I keep sitting down with him because he's fun. One of the things I'm not loving about this year is how a lot of the kids are acting like they're too grown up to play things anymore. All they want to do is hang out and talk at recess. And all they talk about now is who likes who and who is cute and who isn't cute. August doesn't bother about that stuff. He likes to play four scare at recess, which I love to play too. It was actually because I was playing four square with August that I found out about the plague. Apparently, this is a game that's been going on since the beginning of the year. Anyone who accidentally touches August has only 30 seconds to wash their hands or find hand sanitizer before they catch the plague. I'm not sure what happens to you if you actually catch the plague because nobody's touched August yet, not directly. How I found out about this is that Maya Markowitz told me that the reason she won't play Foursquare with us at recess is that she doesn't want to catch the plague. I was like, what's the plague? And she told me. I told Maya I thought that was really dumb, and she agreed. But she still wouldn't touch a ball that August just touched, not if she could help it. The Halloween Party I was really excited because I got an invitation to Savannah's Halloween Party. Savannah is probably the most popular girl in the school. All the boys like her. All the girls want to be friends with her. She was the first girl in the grade to actually have a boyfriend. It was some kid who goes to MS-281, though she dumped him and started dating Henry Joplin, which makes sense because the two of them totally look like teenagers already. Anyway, even though I'm not in the popular group, I get, somehow got invited which is very cool. When I told Savannah I got her invitation and will be going to her party, she was really nice to me, though she made sure to tell me that she didn't invite a lot of people so I shouldn't go around bragging to anyone that I got invited. Maya didn't get invited, for instance. Savannah also made sure to tell me not to wear a costume. It's good she told me because, of course, I would have worn a costume to a Halloween party, not the unicorn costume I made for the Halloween parade, but the goth girl getup that I wore to school. But even that was a no-no for Savannah's party. The only negative about my going to Savannah's party was that now I wouldn't be able to go to the parade and the unicorn costume would be wasted. That was kind of a bummer, but okay. Anyway, the first thing that happened when I got to her party was that Savannah greeted me at the door and asked, where's your boyfriend, Summer? I didn't even know what she was talking about. I guess he doesn't have to wear a mask at Halloween, right? She added, and then I knew she was talking about August. He's not my boyfriend, I said. I know, I'm just kidding. She kissed my cheek. All the girls in the group kissed each other's cheeks, now whenever they said hello. And threw my jacket on a coat rack in her hallway. Then she took me by the hand down the stairs to her basement, which is where the party was. I didn't see her parents anywhere. 
There were about 15 kids there. All of them were popular kids from either Savannah's group or Julian's group. I guess they've all kind of merged into one big super group of popular kids now that some of them have started dating each other. I didn't even know there were so many couples. I mean, I knew about Savannah and Henry, but Jimena and Miles and Ellie and Amos, Ellie's practically as flat as I am. Anyway, about five minutes after I got there, Henry and Savannah were standing next to me, literally hovering over me. So we want to know why you hang out with that zombie kid so much, said Henry. He's not a zombie, I laughed, like they were making a joke. I was smiling, but I didn't feel like smiling. You know, Summer, said Savannah, you would be a lot more popular if you didn't hang out with him so much. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Julian, Julian likes you. He wants to ask you out. He does? Do you think he's cute? Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah, he's cute. So you have to choose who you want to hang out with, Savannah said. She was talking to me like a big sister who would talk to a little sister. Everyone likes you, Summer. Everyone thinks you're really nice and that you're really, really pretty. You could totally be a part of our group if you wanted to. And believe me, there are a lot of girls in our grade who would love that. I know, I nodded. Thank you. You're welcome, she answered. You want me to tell Julian to come and talk to you? I looked over to where she was pointing and could see Julian looking over at us. Um, I actually need to go to the bathroom. Where is that? I went to where she pointed, sat down on the side of the bathtub and called mom and asked her to pick me up. Is everything okay, said mom. Yeah, I just don't want to stay, I said. Mom didn't ask any more questions and said she'd be there in 10 minutes. Don't ring the bell, I told her. Just call me when you're outside. I hung out in the bathroom until mom called, and then I snuck upstairs without anyone seeing me, got my jacket, and went outside. It was only 9.30. The Halloween parade was in full swing down Amsford Avenue. Huge crowds everywhere. Everyone was in costume. Skeletons, parade, pirates, princesses, vampires, superheroes, but not one unicorn. All right, our next chapter is called November. The next day at school, I told Savannah I had eaten some really bad Halloween candy and gotten sick, which is why I left, which is why I went home early from her party, and she believed me. There was actually a stomach bug going around, so it was a good lie. I also told her that I had a crush on someone else that wasn't Julian, so she would leave me alone about that and hopefully spread the word to Julian that I wasn't interested. She, of course, wanted to know who I had a crush on, and I told her it was a secret. August was absent the day after Halloween, and when he came back, I could tell something was up with him. He was acting so weird at lunch. He barely said a word and kept looking down at his food when I talked to him, like he wouldn't look me in the eye. Finally, I was like, Augie, is everything okay? Are you mad at me or something? No, he said. Sorry, you weren't feeling well on Halloween. I kept looking for Boba Fett in the hallways. Yeah, I was sick. Did you have that stomach bug? Yeah, I guess. He opened a book and started to read, which was kind of rude. I'm so excited about the Egyptian Museum project, I said. Aren't you? He shook his head, his mouth full of food. I actually looked away because between the way he was chewing, which almost seemed like he was being gross on purpose, and the way his eyes were just kind of closed down, I was getting a really bad vibe from him. What project did you get, I asked. He shrugged, pulled out a little scrap piece of paper from his jeans pocket and flicked it across the table to me. Everyone in the grade got assigned an Egyptian artifact to work on for Egyptian Museum Day, which was in December. December. The teachers wrote all the assignments down on tiny scraps of paper, which they put into a fishbowl. And then us, all us kids in the grade took turns picking the papers out of this fishbowl in assembly. So I unfolded Augie's little slip of paper. Oh, cool, I said, maybe a little overexcited because I was... Excuse me, because I was trying to get him psyched up. 
you got the step pyramid of Sakura. I know he said, I got Anubis, the god of the afterlife. The one with the dog head? It's actually a jackal head, I corrected him. Hey, you want to start working on our projects together at the school? You could come over to my house. He put his sandwich down and leaned back in his chair. I can't even describe the look he was giving me. You know, Summer, he said, you don't have to do this. What are you talking about? You don't have to be friends with me. I know Mr. Tushman talked to you. I have no idea what you're talking about. You don't have to pretend is all I'm saying. I know Mr. Tushman, talk, Tush, Mr. Tushman talked to some kids before school started and told them they had to be friends with me. He did not talk to me, August. Yeah, he did. No, he did not. Yeah, he did. No, he didn't. I swear on my life. I put my hands up at the air so he could see I wasn't crossing my fingers. He immediately looked down at my feet. So I shook off my Ugg so he could see my toes weren't crossed. You're wearing tights, he said accusingly. You can see my toes are flat, I yelled. Okay, you don't have to scream. I don't like being ac accused of things, okay? Okay, I'm sorry. You should be. He really didn't talk to you? Augie, okay, okay, I'm really sorry. I would have stayed mad at him longer, but then he told me about something bad that happened to him on Halloween and I couldn't stay mad at him anymore. Basically, he heard Jack bad mouthing him and saying really horrible things behind his back. It kind of explains his attitude and now I knew why he'd been out sick. Promise you won't tell anyone, he said. I won't, I nodded. Promise you won't even be mean like that to me again. Promise, he said, and we pinky swore. All right, this will be our last chapter for today. Warning, this is a rated, this kid is rated R. I have warned mom about August's face. I had described what he looked like. I did this because I know she's not always so good at faking her feelings and August was coming over for the first time today. I even sent her a text at work to remind her about it, but I could tell from the expression on her face when she came home from after work that I had prepared her enough. She was shocked when she came through the door and saw his face for the first time. Hi, Mom, this is Augie. Can you stay for dinner, I asked quickly. It took a second for my quick question to even register. Hi, Augie, she said. Um, of course, sweetheart, if it's okay with Augie's mother. While Augie called his mother on his cell phone, I whispered to mom, stop making that weirded out face. She had that look when she's watching the news and some horrific event has happened. She nodded quickly, like she hadn't realized she was making a face and was really nice and normal to Augie afterward. After a while, Augie and I got tired of working on our projects and went to hang out in the living room. Augie was looking at pictures on the mantel and he saw a picture of me and my daddy. Is that your daddy said? Yeah, I didn't know you were, what's the word? Biracial? Yeah, that's the word. Yeah, he looked at the picture again. Are your parents divorced? I've never seen him at drop off or anything. Oh no, I said, he was a platoon sergeant. He died a few years ago. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah, I nodded, handing him a picture of my dad in his uniform. Wow, look at all those medals. Yeah, he was pretty awesome. Wow, Summer, I'm sorry. Yeah, it sucks. I really miss him a lot. Yeah, wow, he nodded, handing me back the picture. Have you ever known anyone who died, I asked? Just my grandmother, and I don't really even remember her. That's too bad. Augie nodded. You ever wonder what happens to people when they die, I asked. He shrugged. Not really. I mean, I guess they go to heaven. That's where my grams went. I think about it a lot, I said. I think when people die, their souls go to heaven, but just for a little while. Like that's when, where they see their old friends and stuff and kind of catch up on old times. But then I actually think that their souls start thinking about their lives on earth, like if they were good or bad or whatever. And then they get born again as brand new babies in the world. Why would they want to do that? Because then they get another chance to get it right, I answered. 
Vesos get a chance to have a do-over? He thought about what I was saying and then nodded, kind of like when you get a makeup test. He said, right. If they don't come back looking the same, he said. I mean, they look completely different when they come back, right? Oh, yeah, I answered. Your soul stays the same, but everything else is different. I like that, he said, nodding a lot. I really like that, Summer. That means in my next life, I won't be stuck with his face. He pointed to his face when he said that and batted his eyes, which made me laugh. I guess not, I shrugged. Hey, I might even be handsome, he said, smiling. That would be so awesome, wouldn't it? I could come back and meet this good-looking dude and be super buff and super tall. I laughed again. He was such a good sport about himself. That's one of the things I like the most about Augie. Hey, Augie, can I ask you a question? Yeah, he said, like he knew exactly what I wanted to ask. I hesitated. I've been wanting to ask him for this but a while, for a while, but I've always lost the guts to ask. What, he said. You want to know what's wrong with my face? Yeah, I guess, if it's okay for me to ask. He shrugged. I was so relieved that he didn't seem mad or sad. Yeah, it's no big deal, he said casually. The main thing I have is this thing called mandibulofacial disotosis, which took, for, took me forever to learn how to pronounce, by the way. But I also have this other syndrome thing that I can't even pronounce. And these things kind of just morph together into one big super thing, which is so rare they don't even have a name for it. I mean, I don't want to brag or anything, but I'm actually considered something of a medical wonder, you know? He smiled. I was a joke, he said. You can laugh. I smiled and shook my head. You're funny, Augie, I said. Yes, I am. He said proudly. I am cool beans. All right, stopping there. Tomorrow's class will be picking back up with the Egyptian tomb.